Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Damien's Midweek Markets, the show where I talk about what's been going on in investment markets and what to look out for in the days and weeks ahead. Now, apologies to those of you who are watching the show on YouTube. There is no visuals this week because we're having work done on the studio, but I'll be back next week and you'll be able to see me as I make this show. But it is more important what I say than rather than what I actually do. So getting on with the show from last week, and to this week, investment markets continue to be preoccupied with the situation in Ukraine. Now, up until the close of play on Wednesday, which was yesterday, if you had taken a look at the S&P 500 over in America and you looked at the interim period, you would have seen a beautiful example of a downtrend with a series of lower lows and lower highs with no let up in sight. So that downtrend has been devastating as it has been almost beautiful to look at. Now, Up until that point, which was prior to today's news of Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, the key market driver continues to be the concerns over rising tensions on the border of Ukraine against a backdrop of rising inflation and tightening monetary policy, especially from Western central banks. Now, gold continues to shine, as described last week, having finally breached that $1,900 dollar level. As mentioned in my 8020 investor newsletter on Sunday, if and when the 1900 level was breached, the next upside target would be the June 2021 high of around about $1,910. Now, a break above there could see an even more aggressive move back towards that $2,000 level, which was last seen in August 2020. And at the same time, it's been interesting to note the volatility in the price of Bitcoin. If you go back to the spring of 2021, so a year ago, Bitcoin was playing a role as an inflation hedge in a risk-on environment. And when I say risk-on, I mean an environment where equity markets rally. Now, this was because real yields were rising. Now, if you remember, a real yield is the yield you would get on a bond minus the current inflation inflation rate. Now, in such an environment of rising real yields, gold is less attractive, which explains why its performance had been lackluster over the second half of 2021. However, Bitcoin's correlation with US technology stocks has been steadily increasing over the last year, and so much so that after the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 hit an all-time high in November 2021 and then slumped 15%, Bitcoin followed suit. And in fact, the price of Bitcoin also hit a peak of $68,700. $189 in November 2021, but has since fallen by 40% as at the close of play on Wednesday and below a crucial $41,000 level, which is a key support level. And below that price, Bitcoin looks vulnerable to further weakness. Now, obviously, today we've woken up to the news that Russia has invaded Ukraine and the trends we've been seeing in recent weeks have exploded aggressively. Now, at the time of making this show, global stock markets are in the throes of an aggressive sell-off. Now, the FTSE 100 is down over 3% today, while the German DAX is down almost 5%. The Russian stock market is down 35% today alone, taking its fall in the last week to 45%. Now, the price of oil, meanwhile, has surged past the $100 a barrel level, helping push energy stocks higher, such as the likes of Royal Dutch Shell. Now, that oil and gas company share price has risen 2% today, while the rest of the stock market crashes around it. Now, gold has also soared as the perfect storm of geopolitics, inflation, fear and falling real yields pushed the precious metal ever higher. Now, the price of gold has leapt almost 3% today and currently sits at $1,960 an ounce, which is a 17-month high. And that puts the $2,000 target back in its sight. Bitcoin, meanwhile, has crashed over 9% today and is now down towards $35,000 as I make this show. And it adds further evidence to the view that Bitcoin is nothing more really than a risk asset correlated more to tech stocks right now rather than a good portfolio diversifier. There has, of course, been an accelerated flight to haven assets such as government bonds in the wake of the invasion, with the 10-year US Treasury yield dropping from 2% to 1.88% today. Now, that is a big move for one day, and we've seen similar moves in UK gilt markets. But while falling yields are positive for the price of bonds, as it means your bond holdings are actually increasing in value, bonds are quite a complicated haven play right now. And as highlighted last week, bonds have struggled 
in 2022 so far, as central bank monetary policy outlooks have turned increasingly hawkish, which means they're likely to continue to tighten monetary policy, which includes putting up interest rates. Now, with the market betting that we will see at least six interest rate hikes in the US this year, two in the Eurozone and the Bank of England base rate hit 2% by this time next year, bonds continue to struggle against that backdrop. It means that bonds are being pushed and pulled by contrasting forces. I mean, on the one hand, you've got a risk off environment such as the one sparked by the Ukraine crisis. Bond prices tend to soar as investors seek safety. However, with oil and commodity prices rising from the economic fallout of the invasion, it's putting further pressure on central banks to raise interest rates in the coming months. Now, that ultimately is bad news for bonds, which is why their price rises today have been somewhat contained despite that flight to safety. So that is why bonds are proving quite a complicated haven play at the moment. Now, unless you've moved your portfolio into cash ahead of the crisis, your portfolio will be suffering some significant losses at the moment. But if you had remained invested in the market but rotated your equity exposure towards energy stocks financials and uk stocks more broadly along with exposure to gold all of these things that i've done on my own 50k portfolio which i run on 8020 investor then you will have reduced the damage from the current sell-off now the question then becomes how much further will equity markets fall now unfortunately no one has a crystal ball but the market weakness we've already seen had already been happening beneath the surface of the headline indices such as the S&P 500 for a number of months now as I've explained on these shows. Now some analysts suggest that equity market shocks centered around the breakout of a war tend to be quite aggressive in nature but relatively short-lived. However even if that is true the inflationary backdrop and tightening monetary policy and slowing economic growth remain headwinds for this market and the Ukraine crisis could exacerbate the inflation issues globally given that rise in oil and commodity prices. Now if you want a benchmark to keep an eye on in the short term then if we look at the S&P 500 in America it officially entered correction territory this week which means it's fallen 10% from its recent high now it also today as I make this show has fallen below its January intraday low of 4,222 and that's after it opened up down 2% as a result of that invasion now it means if you're looking downwards that the 4,100 level is a key level of potential support and then down to the 4,000 level which would be downside targets if we don't find a bottom soon but no one knows when that bottom is going to be in we'll have to look to see how markets react in the coming days and weeks and particularly around those recent lows like I said in January but also in the first half of 2021 because right now equity markets are not only giving up a lot of their gains in recent months but almost over the last year year with the tech stocks in particular giving up most of the gains they made in 2021 so that's what we're seeing with the market moves at the moment equity markets particularly in the u.s are giving back a lot of the gains they've made and still UK equities remain the outperformer for now. But the big driver of markets at the moment remains what happens in the Ukraine and with Russia's invasion and with that backdrop of inflation and tightening central bank policy. It's a very tricky market. So that is it for this week on Damien's Midweek Markets. As ever, you can contact me via email. Damien at moneytothemasses.com is the email address. You can contact me on Twitter, money to the masses with the number two. We're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh.